Wake up in the morning, get my grind on. Hop in the shower, brush my teeth, and get my shine on. Hey, Skylar Mac, we taking trips to different time zones. I feel like ET, way these bitches trying to find a home. Wake up in the morning, get my grind on. Hop in the shower, brush my teeth, and get my shine on. Hey, Skylar Mac, we taking trips to different time zones. I feel like ET. Welcome, everybody, to Living on Purpose podcast with your host, James Hagler. What's up, brother? What's up? All right. Uh, and myself, Jason Wilson. Today, we have a special guest, singer-songwriter, Jean Day Pierce from Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome to our show. Thank y'all so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here um, and just share this experience with you all. Thank You're you welcome. so much. Thank you so much. We're glad to have you. Yes, absolutely. All right. So let's jump right in. So you're from Atlanta. Um, when you grew up, did you have aspirations of being a singer or did this come much later? Okay, so my aspirations growing up was to be the first Olympian with the Grammy to be a lawyer. That was, that was my whole skill. <laughs> that was my whole skill growing up. So like music was always in there, but it was like, I'm going to be an Olympian that won a Grammy. That's an attorney. So um, wow. that was my whole, yeah, that was my whole thing. Um and so I was able to get, get like bits and pieces of um uh, in its own special way. So yeah, but music was definitely like always there. Like yes. Okay, so all through school you sang. Did you play any instruments? So I, I tell people, long answer is if somebody was like, "Hey, Jean Day, I need you to play some music, or I'm gonna take you out." I got a good five songs that I can like push through on keys and on guitar that will sound amazing. But um, I did take up, I didn't recently take up, I took up keys recently actually, cause I wanted to get in like the flow of it, kind of be able to perform with the instrument as well. It's just, you know, singing kind of like make sure I have the whole package as well. So I just kind of took up keys and guitar a little bit. Okay. What, uh, electric guitar, rhythm guitar? Acoustic. Acoustic guitar, okay. Which one you like the best? The keys? Of, the... I like keys because keys don't have my hands on fire. Yeah. Like <laughs> like guitar does. Like by the time you finish practicing on guitar, your, your hands yeah. are red, you got imprints in your hands and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. you know, with keys, the most you got to do is like stretch a little bit, you know, stretch them out. You know, they might get a little tired, but with guitar. Yeah. 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 So. I respect anybody that can play guitar. Seriously. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Especially for a long period of time. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. 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 So I'm like, I got to drink all the mustard, all this stuff. Make sure you don't cramp up. Or anything like that so oh, oh for sure i can imagine <laughs> so oh, yeah. grow, growing up did you have anybody that you looked up to uh that that were singers or musicians uh, that were musicians um at a young age there were people that kind of like pushed me so lily um lily from swv actually went to my church growing up and um she always kind of pushed me a little bit to be like you know keep doing this keep doing that so she really motivated me to stay on the path of music mm -hmm. um as well as people that weren't musically inclined but some of my music teachers my music teacher in elementary school her name was Miss McFadden she was like Jean Day I think you got a little something on you I think you need to stick with it and I was kind of like mm. so she ended up um convincing me to go to performing arts school and just really letting me kind of develop my talent and just keep on really focusing on it. Um, but yeah, like those were pretty much the two musical people that really pushed me um, that were actually there and um, that motivated me. Okay. And now tell us uh, your transition from school to college. Did you sing throughout college too? So not as honestly, not as much as I would have liked. Um, I was on a full track scholarship. So when you're on a full track scholarship up at Florida State, at Florida State at that, um, it's kind of like, hey, you know, that's your that's your job. And as much as I love music, I still would, you know, touch it here and there. I was always writing, like 
you can always write. Um, I wasn't able to really focus and zone in as much on it as I would have liked just because track in itself is like, that's your job. That's what we pay you to do. That's why you're here. So um, no, but I was um, grateful for that, but I definitely would have loved to been able to engulf myself more in music while I was there. Okay, so. The, um, so how was the experience of singing a national anthem at the football game? I know that's gotta be nerve wracking because you gotta <laughs> sing it right. You know, it's just like when, when, when we have the singers come and sing the national anthem in a boxing ring. You know, mm -hmm. it's quieter there because everybody wants to hear it, you know. So I just want to get a feel of what you were, what was going through your mind and how you was feeling. Was you nervous, excited, over anxious? I feel like if you're not nervous, I'm I'm always nervous. I, I promise you I could sing the same song 50 times. And on the 50th time, I'm still going to be nervous. Mm -hmm. But it was it was such a blessing, though, to be able to experience that. Um Oh, but absolutely. I was like, ooh, I ain't trying to be one of them YouTube people that end up <laughs> messing, up, end up messing up the national anthem. I'm not trying to right. be on nobody's bloopers or <laughs> going by for the wrong thing. Um, so it was absolutely like uh, an amazing experience. They had the, the staff there um, at the facility was so amazing. They made sure I had everything I needed. Um like yeah, just to be there um, and just experience that and and sing it well, right, uh, right. it was it was it was super phenomenal. So it was, but yeah, I was definitely like, yeah. you know, we not, <laughs> we not we not gonna mess it up. That's right, right, right. So what do you do for the nerves? Breathe. Hmm. <laughs> like um, sometimes I think we get nervous because we just don't take our time and we feel like we have to rush or we feel we start thinking ahead instead of thinking of like the moment and like thinking of like what's going on now and so sometimes like growing up it's always been like take your time breathe like and I also move if you ever um, if you've ever seen me perform or be on or be on stage I'm moving and it's like oh she's so she's so energetic and it's like child it's because I'm trying not to shake <laughs> um or like be nervous so um I also make sure I move like I'm it's very seldom let you'll see me just like standing there and usually like it's like yeah that's how I breathe and I move so that's that's what helps um kind of get the nerves away and you practice when you practice it helps stuff out as well um oh, yeah because yeah, you're more confident about you're more confident. what you're doing you know no question and uh, if you were, if, I guess if we caught you standing there, with, oh, something's wrong. <laughs> we would know something's wrong. <laughs> something's not right. Something's yeah, not right. Yeah. You know, you know, MC Light, right? Yes. You know how, how when she, this is crazy, uh, but she, when she gets nervous, she farts. <laughs> Does she? she? Didn't have to do it like that. Those yeah, she, she, well, well, cause hey, uh, she said it on Arsenio Hall show. <laughs> She said, she said, I don't forget. I remember watching the show and she says backstage before she performed, she's like, don't stand behind me. And I <laughs> no. was like, why? Dad, and she said, because that's the nerves. The nerves get it. She says she stopped pooping. You know what I mean? And that's just, she's always been that way. And the same thing with like Run DMC, uh, DMC. He had stage fright before he went on the stage. I mean, he had to drink 40 ounces. Mm -hmm. a beer just so he was able to go ahead and perform and that almost killed him later on in his life so he had that's one of the reasons why he stopped performing that yeah, was that was uh janice joplin too man she used to drink a fifth of jack Ooh, yeah Ooh. not the yeah. nurse see the nurse is a killer but i was taught if you if you know the material you know what you're doing it's all right to be a little nervous, but that's yeah. all That's all it should be. It should be no more than that. It shouldn't escalate. Because if you don't know the material, now you got a reason to panic. Because yeah. now you got you to gotta try to get through that. And if you can't get through that, you're going to make a fool of yourself. My dad said, my dad always used to say, he's like, it's okay to be nervous. Don't be scared right. now. Right, but right, it's right. okay to be, he's like, don't be scared, but it's okay to be nervous. Because it's right. like, I feel like when you're nervous, like it's still fresh to you or it's still new and it's not you're not comfortable and you're always willing to be better and you're that's what I get from being nervous I feel like once we get comfortable it's kind of like right am I willing to grow do I can I see where I can do better like 
am I going to give him my all? Am I giving it a hundred percent for me? So yeah, I'm generally like people like you don't get nervous. I was like, so who said that? Little did you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> who said that? <laughs> <laughs> so with the pandemic last year, you know, everybody's music career was affected. Um, how did you transition out of that and put an album out last year? How did you do that? So, um, you know, I, the pandemic for a lot of people was um, a little unfortunate. Um, but for me, I was definitely able to zone in. I was like, stuff is kind of like shut down a little bit. And that was my time to really zone in. And I produced my baby, my and I was, um, that was what it was for me. It was a time to just kind of focus and like kind of reevaluate um, and prioritize as well. It was like, what, like, what am I trying to do right now? What is my goal right now? And let me zone in and focus on that. So the pandemic for me was necessary. Um, it was kind of some time for me to just reevaluate and just really zone in on my project instead of like, oh, I got to do this. Or I got to go somewhere. I, I don't have time. It's like, what's the reason? Like, right. why can't you focus on it? Um, especially if, like, I have the resources and people are staying safe. Like, yeah, let's go ahead and, like, let's finish this bad boy up and let's put this out. Mm. So um, as far as um, making money from your music, um, are you touring? Uh, I know that, you know, sales on Internet is is like nothing. What is like two or three cents per download, <laughs> something like that? I mean, you don't it's make money not, like that. Not much. Um so for me, so my goal uh, for my project was first just to show a lot of people were like, hey, we don't have any like viable music from you. Can you make a, you know, can you make a project? Because a lot of people, singles are amazing and I, I don't knock it like singles are great, but it's hard for a lot of people to create a body of work. Right. And so I was like, hey. I want y'all, I can do singles and I can do that, but I also want you to know that I can like, I can put together a body of work. Like, of course, you know, I had help and I appreciate everybody that like was a part of it, but this was like, Jean Day wants to do this. Jean Day's investing in this. Jean Day is doing this. And I just wanted to create a body of work. Fortunately that it's been helpful. I was able to get placements um, from the writing. Cause I wrote um, probably like 95% of my project and everything wow. else was just like from producers and things like that, like helping, but like I, I pinned my whole project. And so a lot of the opportunities as far as like songwriting opportunities came into play, um, which is, you know, that's money on, you know, that's, that's that longevity, that the good money um, right. in song, uh, songwriting. Um, and then I just was given other opportunities so like it's i've been making i appreciate my project like it did exactly what it needed to do um i got shows i've been able to perform my music in atlanta um, what, that so was the next question i was going to ask yeah i've just been able to it's it's nice to like it's you know i always enjoy doing covers but it's it's always a different feeling to write some like to perform something that like come from somewhere that you wrote and for people to want you to perform your music right. you know a lot of people are like yeah I want you to sing this but it's like when people are like hey I want you to perform your song I love that song can you mm -hmm. do that song off your project so like yeah I've been granted opportunities to perform my music as well around Atlanta and just different places so I'm excited um I'm excited for now but I'm also excited for like what's to come as well no okay doubt, so because I was I was wondering about that because uh, I used to hang around uh, Jamal, Jamal and Malik and okay. they, uh, you know, they was discovered by Left Eye. And back in the day, they hung around uh, Keith Sher I mean, Keith Murray, Eric Sherman, and their group was called Illegal. And that's how they made their money was doing shows in Atlanta because everybody, you know, they was always featured, featured on uh, Eric's album or Keith albums or even Redman's album. And, you know, people wanted to hear them. And that's how they made the bulk of their money was doing these little shows, especially around in Atlanta. At the time, Atlanta was blowing up. We had the rim shop. Everybody would come into the rim shop. I mean, I met everybody. Pink, Shaq, all of them come to the rim shop. That was like, that was like the Mecca when you came to Atlanta back oh. in 92. And that's how, like I said, that's how Jamal and them, that's how they would get their money was doing the shows. The shows brought the big money, especially when you're doing them right there in Atlanta too. Yeah. 
and it's and it's it's opportunity definitely in Atlanta. Atlanta being like the new like the hot spot right now. It's well, what's well, what's the biggest clubs in Atlanta? Because I don't know them right now. I know all the old ones. <laughs> clubs, okay. Because I'm thinking of like venues. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the same thing. <laughs> um. So. For sure. So I I just performed at City Winery and a lot of like cool people, like a lot of people come through City Winery. That's always a a cool spot to perform. St. James Live is cool. Performing at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium is always like a cool thing to do um, because I was blessed to be able to do that with Kanye um, for his listening party um, events that he had, concerts. Uh, What else? There's so many. There's so many places in Atlanta that that are now like looking for live music or looking for play, like people to perform but wow, for sure wow, really those are definitely yes but for sure wow. like those are some of my favorites that I've performed at no there's this place called backstage I always enjoy performing there um yeah there's so many places does, um, does there any hip-hop hip-hop uh, venues actually to come and sing there or how does that work? As in, I'm trying to think of what, like, like tabernacle type vibes, like type places, or um, uh, well, they have, they have like no hip hop places. Cause I'm trying to think of what would be considered a hip hop place. Oh wow! See, see, that's the difference now because we back then we had 112 Velvet Room. Mm. You know, those clubs don't even exist now. So I, I would. That's why I'm asking you because you're the you're young and you know it, you're out and about it. So, well, at least when I go to Atlanta, I can say, hey, I want to go to this club here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And now, well, then, as, I know. feel like everything is so, like, such a mixture, though. So it's, like, the same wow. places that'll have, like, R&B things, like, one night or, like, R&B shows will have, like, hip-hop artists or, like, other type of artists. I think because Atlanta is so, like... Versatile. culturally diverse yeah it's it's a lot of stuff going on so I, I don't even think now there's that I'm aware of there's even places that are like well this is designated for this or this is designated for this genre um for for me um yeah but I have I've I've done a couple um some things with some hip-hop artists as well but it was it's like technically not a hip-hop venue though so I was like right. thinking of the, so yeah right so it changed up a little bit uh a lot it's, it's changed. From, it's from changed. Even from when I was here. Because I was yeah. gone for about five and a half years. So wow. when I came back to Atlanta, I kind of had to relearn everything all over again for me. No doubt. So, I, I feel the same way because I'm asking my son, I'm like, what, what, you know, where the clubs are? I was just down there not too long ago with my son fighting. And I was like, well, you know, what's the best club to go to? He he mentioned some club. I, I can't even remember the name of it because it's just a weird, it's a weird name and I was like wow and he and he was just saying that's what uh, I guess the baby that's where they go and uh mm-hmm. and, and perform and chill and I'm just trying to find out because I haven't been down there and hung out I have actually I haven't hung out in Atlanta for years. yeah they have like Josephine Lounge that's like a new major place as well um and then I know they also have like Apache Apache super cool open mic hip-hop vibes as right, well so right, right. those are some other two places that are it's always going to be some type of music, hip hop music, R and B music going on there. Well, that's cool that it's diverse. Like, that means it, it just gives you more action, and it, it's just more more of a variety of things that's going on. Are there any artists that you want to collaborate with? Oh my god, yes. yes. <laughs> um, so I I love I love Jasmine Sullivan. I've been loving her for a long time, a very long time. Uh, I've really been rocking with Lucky Day lately. Yeah. Like, I really love Lucky Day. I love his sound. I love, like, the live instrumentation that he brings. I've really, um, I've really been bobbing with, um, with him a lot. Of course, I would love to write. I would love to write for Beyonce. Like, I would love to just write a Beyonce record. Um, for me, okay, so I, I love to have Jay-Z on the record uh, with me. That's my favorite. Like, I love him. That's my favorite rap- rapper. Um, but I would really love, um, i love to do a record with him um, in the future. And 
I would love to, one thing that Lucky Day's been doing that I really like, he's kind of been mixing some of like the more seasoned artists in some of his music. Like he has a record with Babyface, he has a record with like Earth, Wind & Fire. Right. So like, I would love to do something with like Anita. I would love to do something with, ooh. I would I would love to write with Babyface as well. I would love to either like like collaborate on a record with Babyface because he's just so talented. Um, yes, he is. He is. Yeah. yeah, and I also would like to write a I have a record with the Dream as well. The Dream, like him having pen a record. Right. Yes. What about how about um? What do you go for you for your beats? Okay, so for my beats, so for my project. Um, the producers that I used, it's it's such an interesting story. Um, it's just kind of just meeting people at the right time and right. at the right place. Uh, literally, I was an um, artist wanted me to help collab with the project they were working on. And so from collaborating with her, I ended up meeting the producers that are some of one of the producers that are on my project, the creative villains. And so then from there, um, I actually met the other one other producer that's on my project. I had an interview at 107.9 and um, he was there speaking as well. And we ended up just connecting. Like, it's, it's just funny how like things kind of just fall into place. So it wasn't any like anything specific, like, yeah. oh, I want them. It's just I know meeting the right people at the right time. Another one of my producers met him at church um, and he ended up just being dope as well and from him I met the um the only female producer I have on my project TP who created a couple records on my project as well so like it was just things just fell into place like things are just aligned and that's how I ended up working with the producers that I have and then just from different opportunities now I've just been meeting a lot of other producers um and just seeing what fits because you know people can be amazing but if if the chemistry isn't there right. while working on it it just won't you know, it won't mesh. So, so right. like, do, like, do you like working with uh, more synthesizers or instruments? I like instruments. I'm a I'm an instrument type of girl. <laughs> but um, so a couple of my records have live instrumentation. Um, but I'm not like I'm not gonna say like if it's not live. No doubt, no doubt. Keep it away. You know, keep it no out no of my way. face. But yeah, um, I did definitely you, yeah, because you miss out a lot if you yes. do. That. But I definitely, I appreciate a good live collaborative effort on a record. No doubt. Um, so you yeah. gotta check, you gotta check this, this girl out on Spotify. Her name is Jazzy Modo, Jazzy Mozo. Okay. And she did a lot of music for, um, for, uh, well, what's that group? Just sing any of, um, it's the old school group. They, they use their music all the time. Uh, I got it on the tip of my tongue. Um, MOP. Okay. She did a lot of this stuff. She's she's dope. She's dope. You have to check her stuff out on uh, Spotify. You might like some of her stuff. Jazzy okay. Moto. Jazzy Moto. Yeah. Okay. Her 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 um her uncle. He's a famous conductor. You know he uh the way he used to write music is bananas. Okay. Like something off of Charlie Brown walking down the street. He's like this. And you look at him like, what is he doing? I, what he's doing, he's 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 do, making music. He's doing the notes, and he'd just stop and he would write stuff down. He was phenomenal, you know, phenomenal uh, guy, man. So she gets she gets the talent from him, and she works with a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of hip hop artists as well. Oh, okay. So if you get a chance, check out Jazzy Moto. Got you. So John Day. Yeah. I'm sorry, James. Go ahead. Uh, she said she calls herself the baddest female uh, producer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. So, Jean Day, uh, is your music talent uh, inherited from somebody else in your family? Or is this something that, that's been given to you by God directly? So, word on the street is my grandmother could sing. But other than that, I don't know where it came from. <laughs> my dad, the most my dad can do, he can whistle very well. And, <laughs> and that's all, that's pretty much all I got. Like I wasn't, um, no, it wasn't 
it wasn't that helped the whistling helped, but as far as like singing, mm-mm. we're gonna say grandma. We're gonna say you got it from grandma. We're gonna say it's from grandma because right. everybody else, it's a no. It's it's, it's a no for me, dog. It's a no for me. Oh, now, ha- no. now, have you heard Ray Leonard Jr. sing? I feel like I have. Should I be nervous? Yeah, I caught that. I mean, should I be nervous? I was like, I'm not saying he can't. He can't I haven't heard of. So, uh, okay, all right. I get a little... It's like this: if you haven't heard him, then that means he can't. <laughs> no, yeah, actually, actually, bro. Uh, I did an event with Ray Leonard Jr. last year. He was on my uh, my networking event online, right. and uh, his uh, his manager Joy was like, "Ray can actually sing," and everybody's like, "Okay, we got to hear this." And he actually sang, bro. Really? He did. Why? He, I don't know why he's keeping that under under wraps. Like I don't this. know, but but he can sing. <laughs> yeah. So we we definitely gotta uh, get him to sing on our show. <laughs> Oh, that's gonna be tough. Yeah, yeah you, gotta, you gotta put him on the spot. You can't tell him ahead of time. You gotta put him. On I know. The spot. I know. I don't yeah. even think putting him on the spot. I think we have to pull some teeth, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, John Day, you have uh, something you're gonna perform for us today. I do. I do. I do. So I'm going to be performing a song off of my project, Face the Facts, that is out everywhere on all streaming platforms. Um, And it's called But You, um, produced by Creative Villains. Um, We have Tyler Alexander on guitar, and I wrote the record. Phenomenal. All right. So we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Right. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Jean Day, and the song you are about to hear is But You off of my project, Face the Facts. Hope you enjoy. Mm-hmm. Chorus, my body, yeah. in my mind as you're loving me down now that you're here promise I won't let you down cause I'm loving the way you hold me loving the way you care it's it's something about you baby my heart can't seem to bear I don't want nobody but you baby I don't want nobody but you, baby. Yeah. Go no stop. Please. Please don't say a word. Let me admire your canvas. It's my body you serve. I know I don't deserve what you're about to do. Let our bodies intertwine. Let me put my passion fruit juices on you. you. Loving the way you care. It's something about you, baby. My heart can't seem to bear. I don't. I don't want nobody but you, baby. Yeah. No. Sparks are flying, heat is rising, and your body's all on my day. I'm so grateful just to have you. No matter what they say and all that we've been through, I do it all again. I'm so grateful to be loved by you. 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 You, you, baby, 
baby, it's you. Loving the way you carry it. It's something about you, baby. My heart can't seem to bear. I don't. So, John Day, where, where can everybody find you on social media? Well, everybody can find me on social media. You can find me on Facebook, IG. It is J A N D E L O V E, the number one. So, J A N D E L O V E one. John Day Love One, that's on my Twitter, that's on my IG. It's my name, John Day Pierce, on Facebook and on Spotify, Apple Music. Title is John Day, just John Day, and the title of the album is Face the Facts. Wonderful. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Bye. All right. Take care now. You too.